exact thing, except for now you're going to do actions they, you've never seen them do before, but still similar to what they like to do. So if they like to um, push a car, you might try to have the car jump. Or if they like to push a car on the floor, you might push a car down a ramp. Um, so it's still pretty similar at first, but then you can try to do just random novel things and see if they still imitate you. Um, and then again with this, you don't move on until they have about 8 to 10 actions. And then that's when you would start doing um, sequences of actions, like pushing the car down the ramp, having it go up the elevator, and then having it crash into another car. Or giving the baby a bottle, rocking the baby, and putting the baby in a crib. Um, you wouldn't do those more complicated ones until they can do the more simple. Does anybody have questions about the imitation? Alright, so the social piece. This was my favorite part of the book, and if all of this stuff that you're hearing about for the Early Start Denver model is stuff you've already heard but you haven't heard this, I would highly recommend buying it just to read this part of the book. Um, the quotes from this that I, I thought were really important are, children with autism are often are less inclined to initiate interactions with people and tend to focus on a narrow range of activities. Is that true for most people in the room? Yes? Okay. Infants thus actively shape the amount and type of social exchanges with caregivers. How many of you have, have watched typically developing children and, and their interactions with adults? And I'm always like flabbergasted when I see it. Like walk in a room and a three month old is like looking at you and smiling and getting you to smile back. And then an 18 month old is pointing at things and really just they're constantly in your face initiating stuff with you. Um, however, the child with autism may not respond with pleasure, eye contact, or laughter. So a lot of you can probably remember when your child was younger, when you would try to do those things with them, they were often staring off into space or they might have even cried. And so what does that do? That leads to you not doing those things anymore because you don't think it's fun for your child and you don't want to you know, hurt them. Um, if the social partner feels as if their initiations are not positive for the child, they may well decrease their initiations. And that's very behaviorally based. You're not receiving reinforcement for interacting, so you're just going to stop interacting. And now it's a vicious cycle because your child's not initiating, you're not initiating, nobody's initiating, and everybody just hangs out by themselves. Um, that doesn't happen with kids that are typically developing. And it like blew my mind when I first started working with the really little ones how much I had to learn about what typically developing children just do <laughs> on their own without anybody ever telling them to. Um, and that we need to teach our kids to do those things as well. So why is this important? The book goes into great depth about how social interactions are integral to learning. How do babies learn? Do they learn because people come up to them and say, this is a cat, this is a dog, this is a tree, and they say, do this, do this, do this. No, they're constantly going around their environment, seeing what they can learn and initiating interactions and pulling out books and looking at stuff and trying to label things, and they're just initiating all of that on their own. So. Um, it's through social interactions. They're initiating that. What's this? What's that? Ooh, look. You know, I'm constantly pointing out things. If they didn't do that, they probably wouldn't be learning a whole lot. So we know from research that kids learn, people learn in general through imitation, watching somebody else do it, but also through the social interactions. If people don't care about social interactions, they are not going to learn as much if they did care about social interactions. Um, and I think that's a huge piece that's been missing, and people have been calling ABA out on it for years, <laughs> that we don't focus on that. But that doesn't mean we can't focus on it, it just means that nobody ever realized how important it was. Okay, so this is just a little bit of brain science. Um, I, for me personally, I can't see the brain, so I prefer to explain things behaviorally, but, um, but for those of you who are really into brain stuff, um, basically, the explanation for this is it's hypothesized that we have neural pathways in our brain, and when we're babies and getting our brain is growing and developing, these pathways are growing and developing. If those pathways never receive feedback from the environment and are never um, basically, you're the child's not exposed and initiating those types of interactions, those pathways die off, and then those relationships don't develop for them. So what the book talks about is how children with autism often have object pathways. For whatever reason, we don't know why, they are drawn to objects. So they, they think, you know, 
um, this, uh, this cord is really cool, or they think the lights are really cool, or they have their spoons that they like to carry, but they're not drawn to people. So the more that they are drawn to those objects and just go with the objects, those pathways are getting stronger and stronger, and the social pathways are dying off, is the hypothesis. Again, I can't see that happening, but I can see it in their behavior. I definitely know most of my kids would much rather engage with their toys or their objects than they would a person. So the key is to try to develop that as young as possible so those pathways don't die off and that behavior is formed before they get too old. Um, so one other thing I wanted to talk about with the social piece is um, kind of relating this to our own life. Think about who your friends are. Are you friends with people who have zero interest in common with you? Probably not. What do you gravitate towards? Do you try to find people who look nothing like you and want nothing to do with anything that you like to do? Or do you gravitate towards the people who you know are going to like the same things that you like? <coughs> you don't have to answer. This is just to think about. Um, who are your child's friends? What does your child gravitate towards? What is most motivating for your child? How much are you allowing your child to engage with those things that he or she finds most motivating? How much fun do you think it is for them if you're constantly not letting them engage with those things and they see you as the person who stops them from the most fun things in the world that they like to do? So a lot of the times you'll hear that you have to stop the kids from having their obsessions or looking at the things that they want to look at. But until you can form that relationship with them, and develop with them that desire to interact with you, you're pretty much killing your relationship with your child because you're not allowing, you like, you don't want to interact with people that don't want to do the same things as you do. If I meet someone, I'm a huge football fan. If I meet someone who likes to go to the mall and shop and look, get pedicures and manicures, probably not my friend. But if I meet someone who wants to go to the bar and watch a football game, they are definitely my friend. So if people were constantly coming up to me and saying, you can't watch football, that's bad. No, you can't do it, you can't do it. I would not become friends with those people. It's the same thing for our kids. If they really like to um, you know, go like this with their fingers and you're constantly, no, 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 can't do that. No, 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 no. Okay, well, all right, I can't do this. Um, let's see, what can I do? I'm gonna rock back and forth. No, 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 you can't do that either. Nope, can't do that. Okay, what am I going to do? They see you as this person who's just stopping them from doing every single thing that they like to do. So the best thing to do is to build that social relationship with them based off what they like to do. If they like to go like this, you do that with them. If they like to go like this, you do that with them. Do you stop there? No. <laughs> that's what some of the other therapies recommend. You just do that. And Katie can tell you because she used to work for one. Yeah. That's not how you're going to teach your child. That's just to build that initial, oh, she can do what I do. That's pretty cool. I like that person. Oh, she can do that too. That's pretty neat. I like that too. And then you have that bond and you can start making them attend to what other people like. It's not that children with autism aren't motivated or that they aren't social. It's that their motivations and the way that they want to be social is different from what we do. That doesn't mean they have to do it the same way we do. Why are we better? Like, like we shouldn't make them, I like football, so you have to like football. That's not fair. But we do want to teach them to broaden their horizons. I didn't used to like country music. I still don't like it a whole lot, but I can tolerate it a little bit more than I used to. It's about getting that um, initial pairing, getting that relationship built, and then broadening it out for them. And I used to think that that was kind of a crazy idea, but now that I've read a lot of these books and I see how important it is to develop that relationship and that connection, not just so that the child is happy, but so that the child can learn. If you don't have that relationship, they can't learn. Does that make sense? Does anybody think I'm crazy for talking about that? Okay. <laughs> so wait, just before we move on, am I advocating only ever doing what your child wants to do? No. No, okay, just to make sure. We're clear on that. All right, one of the other things that they had a lot of good things to say about was vocalizations, and again, in the... Um,